Welcome back to the Remote No Pressure Podcast. Bill, how are you, man? I am well. How are you doing? Doing awesome. You know, you said something earlier. I say a lot of things. I know you I do. apologize if it... If <laughs> I don't. I don't think before I speak. <laughs> Last week's episode was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I actually listened to it twice. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> don't tell anybody. It's our secret. <laughs> driving up numbers. Oh, <laughs> uh, driving up. No, it was funny. It was hilarious. I was had a great time hanging out with you. Yeah. Um. We. One of the things that you said earlier, though, uh, before we pressed record, is that there's nothing better than free and Sasquatch. That's right. What did you think of These the giveaway? These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you think of the giveaway? Actually, I mis- misinterpreted that. I, I meant we should free Sasquatch. We should free yes. Sasquatch. Yes. He's been captive too long. Government knows what we're talking about. Maybe. Did you read that? <laughs> <laughs> Trump, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. no. Did you, did you see Area 51, like 250,000 people or something? Or going into Area 51 at one time? No. To to find the UFOs, and they're like, you can't stop all of us. So they're all like literally lining up in the desert, about to go into Area 51. <laughs> I'm serious. Did they, you hear about they that? They could stop all of them. It would be ugly, but I have not heard yeah. about that. That would be ugly. Mm-hmm. They could stop them all. Oh yeah, they've got a lot of um, new technology. They're not talking about like like they don't want to talk about because if the enemies knew we had this kind of stuff, I mean like. It could be bad, and it, but it's like stuff that could stop you in your tracks without killing you. You know. Ah, uh, you know when people like listen to us, they, weapons. People, when people listen to us, they probably think we're like conspiracy theorists. Yeah, we. That's I, a good I, conspiracy. I kind though, of am, it? but uh. <laughs> 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 well, we talked about controlling the weather. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and there's actually videos of of people making clouds and stuff. Yeah, seeding clouds. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll just leave that at that because. Uh, yeah, so I could go on and on about weather control, but I wonder if maybe Sasquatch is a UFO. You know, I have heard theories about that. Are you serious? Because I yeah. just made that up. I just literally pulled that out. People of the sky. have people experience uh, UFO sightings and Sasquatch sightings at the same time. People think that they are both interdimensional um, beings and entities. I've heard. But see, when I think of interdimensional, in, interdimensional dementities, <laughs> <laughs> one of them mornings. When I when I think about that, I think of bald. You know what I mean? But I think I don't think of hair. But, what? But, oh. but it could oh. be so like, like a like a UFO is you never see hair on a UFO. They don't. <laughs> Or aliens, for or, that matter. Or aliens. Look at that bald UFO up there. <laughs> not, a, not a hair on it. <laughs> right, right. Not a hair on it. Uh, it's because... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but you know, like those aliens, those weird faces and things, they're bald. You know? They're uh, well, they like they're the, Brazilian. They like to shave. <laughs> <laughs> I was dancing around that joke I in my know. head, and I'm like, nah. I know, you know, and uh, we, we edit some things out. Something, something. Others we, we don't. To. That one, that one's staying in. I like it. The Brazilian, <laughs> the we Brazilian aliens. These Brazilian UFOs. Uh, but uh, but what is the opposite of the bald? Would be the hair. Yeah. So maybe the Sasquatch is from another dimension, not necessarily the, the same dimension. That, this is a possibility. And we are kind of uh, in the middle. Where we got just enough hair. Oh, we are in. We are in just the right dimension. Just the right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The Goldilocks theory of. Of hair, so a free Sasquatch. Yes. Oh yeah, that was interesting. That was a uh, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. So we did a giveaway this week. Got to follow us on on the Instagram. Follow us on the Instagram in the sky there. Mm-hmm. Um, follow us on the Instagram. We gave away five free Sasquatch stickers this week. That's a that's a steal too. For free. For, for free. free. For free. That's they a- just got to pay a separate fee for shipping <laughs> and handling. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pay nineteen ninety nine. Each for shipping and handling, <laughs> and they get a free sticker in the mail. No, <laughs> <laughs> one two inch decal. Congratulations! <laughs> sure, I'll give it to you for free. No, they get it for free. We're mailing it for free. No taxes. Uh, no um, shipping. Shipping. Nothing. We're just putting it in yeah. the mail and shipping it to them. Yeah. And uh, drum roll, please. Um, let's let's announce the winners. Yes, we let's. got five winners. Uh, Brian Cole, K O L L. Awesome! Congratulations, Brian. 
Brian Berg. Congratulations, Brian, number two. But, and this is not a coincidence. Like this, I mean, this is not a coincidence. This is a coincidence. I randomly picked these. Yeah, people. you did. I saw you do that just prior to this podcast. B- Brian Cole, Brian Berg, Peter Olison. Peter, congratulations. Nikki Turner. Nikki, congratulations. Nikki with two C's. Nikki with two C's. Is it Nikki or Nichi? Oh, Nichi. Nikki. Nikki. Careful, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Nikki Turner and Joel Sneeden. And I know there's a lot of Joel Sneedens out there, and you're wondering, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? We'll contact you on Look, <laughs> look don't call us, Joel. We'll call us. <laughs> 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 we know there's a lot of Joel Sneedens out there, uh, but we'll we'll uh, DM. We'll slip into your DM and uh, get your mailing address so uh, we can get those out to you. Yeah. Um, Bill, yes. if you got pulled over by a cop, what's the craziest thing they would find in your in your uh, SUV. Uh, these days, really not a lot. My fishing gear. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. Nothing crazy? No. No. Have you ever carried anything crazy? No, I used to carry a gun. You did? Mm-hmm. I'd leave that locked up under my seat when I wasn't carrying. What kind of gun did you you have? Pistol. MP shield. Oh, yeah? 9 mil, yeah. How'd you like that? I liked it. It's a fun little pistol. You shoot it all anymore or not really? Oh, once in a while, like a couple times a year, I'll go out to the range or I'll go out mm-hmm. to somebody's property and shoot it. Yeah. My kids like to shoot 22s out back. Yeah, they're fun. And I think I've said it before, but Reagan's like, my son, my oldest is like, the smell of gunpowder just calms me down. <laughs> like, I just look at him like, what do you, what do you just say? Like, what kind of child am I raising? <laughs> Calm you down. No, but, uh, but that's cool, man. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. Um, well, the reason I ask is because there was a certain article that came across my desk, hmm. my floral desk. So you saw that. Uh, that my, my wife bought. Uh, but have you ever, have you, you've been to Oklahoma, haven't you? Yeah. Didn't you have a buddy that moved to Oklahoma or something like that? A Texas, musician guy? But, Texas. Uh, Richie, yeah. What were you doing in Oklahoma? Um, I've been to conferences out there, too. Oh, in, in yeah. Tulsa. That's right. Tulsa. Oh, we, did, we do have a mutual, a mutual friend from Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. Used to, used to work with us. Nate yeah. Dog. Yep. Yeah, I, I was thinking about... Do we about, have another one, too? Oh, Gunger used to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, does he live in... Oh, the, now there's he's different out west. ones. Yes. There's different ones. There's many of them. Um, but uh, Oklahoma's kind of a unique place. My wife and I love Oklahoma. We actually mm-hmm. vacation there. Really? We do. Uh, there is a, uh, a town there that we go to north of Tulsa. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, Bartlesville. Oh. It is where Philip 66 was, was made. Nice. And uh, there's a famous architect, uh, Lloyd, Frank Lloyd Wright. Yep, yep. We had a Frank Lloyd Wright here home in Grand Rapids. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did not. But there's a Frank Lloyd, uh, um, Frank Lloyd Wright home in Grand Rapids, but he also has, he's built, he built one skyscraper. No kidding. And he built, he was going to build it in downtown New York City. The Great Depression happened. So it, they they put it they sidelined the So where do you go? Bartlesville, Oklahoma. <laughs> no, 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 what he did was he got the the depression like happened so he wasn't able to build it in New York City. Mm-hmm. So like 10 years later he's like my building's too good to be amongst all the other buildings in New York. I'm going to build it in the plains. I'm going to build it in the middle of nowhere so people could really appreciate <laughs> this building. And uh and he built the skyscraper in downtown Bartlesville, Oklahoma. It's pretty random. Interesting. But it's amazing. How big is it? It's pretty big. Yeah? I mean, it's not like a 35-story building or anything, but it's probably... 30? Pro- <laughs> pro- <laughs> 35, probably like a good 33, 34. 30. <laughs> I was going to say, you leave me to... It's not like 35 stories, but I mean, it's good at least 33 and a third. No. Uh, but Top's it's, just a crawl space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an attic. They don't have basements in Tulsa. No, or in Barcelona. No, but, um, but anyways... But we love, so just for my listeners, no, before I read this article, that in no way, shape, or form are we dissing Oklahoma. No. Uh, I've got family in Duncan. The Troutman clan uh, ha- uh, actually hails from the Duncan area, Duncan, Oklahoma. Interesting. Um, but I'm from Texas, and I'm a Texan, and people who know Texas and Oklahoma kind of have a rivalry. <laughs> but an Oklahoma man was arrested stolen in a stolen car. Okay, in Oklahoma, arrested in a stolen car with a snake, uranium, <laughs> gun, 
and whiskey. What? <laughs> that sounds like a night out. <laughs> An Oklahoma man was arrested last month after police say a routine traffic stop turned up a gun, a rattlesnake, <laughs> an open bottle of whiskey, and a rod of radioactive <laughs> What was he trying to do? Like, uh... Maybe, you know, maybe he was making a super snake. I was thinking, like, maybe he's trying to write a comic book, but, like, ah, I'm a, I'm a method actor. I'm, I, I have to write from experience. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got to know I'm building this rattlesnake that will be the super biggest rattlesnake of all time, and I'm going to need it injected with uranium. But just one rod of uranium. Just, just one rod of Don't uranium. Don't want to be selfish. How how does that happen? Also, how do you open, get uranium? I don't know. I uh, you know it's it maybe Back to the Future too. Is that what <laughs> Doc was getting? Remember that? Isn't that what he needed for his time machine? Was it uranium or plutonium? Pl- two. It was um Mr. Trash, wasn't it? Remember that? It that's was powered right. Off trash. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Part that was one more, yeah. was when he needed the radioactive uranium or yep. something like that, and he stole it from the Russians. Yep. Gosh, that that was the best science fiction classic movie. Part two was better than part one though. I liked part three, though, too. With the trains, the out yeah. west? Yeah. Really? You like that? I like westerns. I like westerns. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I, did I tell you that I show my kids, we sat down and we watch True Grit. Oh, which one? With the original one with John, John Wayne. Wayne. You think, yep. oh, it's John Wayne, and it's rated G. Yep. So it's all great. There's like a public hanging in the movie. Yep. And one guy gets his hand chopped off. And I was like, no, man, my kids can't watch this, but it was too late. You got to commit now. It's I'm like, Duke. close your eyes, kids. I'm like, surely it was rated G, but... No, G meant nothing in the 70s. No. (laughs) Oh, it's a Western. I learned a lot about... (laughs) (laughs) learned a lot about women in the 70s. Uh, (laughs) They were not Brazilian. (laughs) (laughs) They were from this dimension. (laughs) Possibly the next... (laughs) Good. We'll see if that makes it. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. I would not recommend you watching rated G movies from the 70s. Mm-hmm. But uh, this week, I'm very, very excited because we have we have Justin Carf. Um, it's his, real, his last name is, is Carfagini. Carfagini, I think. Genie. He says it on the podcast. Okay. I believe it's Italian. I don't know. But, um, sounds Italian. Yeah, it sounds like, but he but makes. But I'm not one to judge. I'm not, you know, we're loving and accepting That's podcasts. exactly right. It doesn't matter what his last name is. Nope. But he goes by Carf. That's his nickname. That's pretty sweet. Do you have a nickname in school? Uh, not in high school, no. Wild Bill, obviously. Yeah, I got that after high school. Like, well, I, I, yeah, my dad called me that all growing up, but then, um, college hit, and that's, yeah, I earned it. I earned that. <laughs> <laughs> And that's wild with a Y. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's pretty sweet, though. Uh, my nickname, can you guess? Did you know what my nickname was in high school? Because we didn't obviously know each other in high school. We no. knew each other right out of college, but Jew. Whoa. Jew, J-E-W, which would not be a politically correct nickname. Not, not in this decade. Isn't that crazy? But like that was my nickname uh, from like 12 years old till I got out of, I got out of high school. Uh, why shall we? Shall I ask why? Was there a... I mean, um, I'm uncomfortable. It's very. It was very. Uh, it was. I was playing volleyball at my church youth group, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I like where this is going already. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I hit the ball, and this dude named John says, "Hit it better, Jewish boy." And I'm not Jewish at all. Now it's offensive to hear it on right now, you know. Yeah. Like, but back then I was like, "Ha ha, funny, funny," and I knew he was just kidding. It wasn't a racial slur. Uh, for one, because I I knew he wasn't a racist. Number two, I am I'm not Jewish, you know. Um, and then everyone's like calling me Jewish for a while, <laughs> and then everyone called me Jew. Huh? That was my nickname from middle school all the way through high school, and I never thought anything of it. Jew, talk to Jew. Jew will help you out, you know, because I played a lot of music at my church and stuff, and there's a lot of people that only know me. By the name Jew. No kidding. So if you if you're if you're friends with me on Facebook on mm-hmm. my birthday, one or two people will be like, "Happy birthday, Jew!" 
<laughs> Isn't that crazy? But it's just so politically incorrect. Now I would never, you know, want anyone to be called that. Mm -hmm. Um because it's almost like a racial thing, but it's I not. Know. It's, it's such weird. a uncomfortable culture right now you don't even feel right calling some of that even if they are jewish yeah and, and like if i kept that nickname till now yeah like i'd have to i can't have to get rid of the nickname no politics for you like no running for office no no what and unless i would uh, uh but like, you know it's <clears throat> it is uh interesting times but his nickname is carf c-a-r-f everybody calls him carf so, uh, so I call him Carf through most of the podcast, and he's a great guy. He's got uh, awesome content as far as – that's where I reached out to him. I mean, he doesn't have a book deal or anything, but he's got some great content, um, and he does some really cool stuff. So. Awesome. Yeah, so welcome to the podcast. Let's light the fire. Well, today on the Remote No Pressure podcast, I'm excited to have Justin Carf with us, also known as Carf. So thank you very much for hanging out with us, Justin. You're welcome. Glad to be here. You know, I followed you for a little while on the Instagram. You're doing some really cool things um, with with some cool companies and whatnot. What are some of those things? Um, well, before we get started on that, I noticed on your blog that you're really, really passionate about warm water species. H how did you How did you get excited about that? Considering you live in the Midwest, um, how How did you get excited about warm water species? So. I grew up in Illinois, just outside of Chicago, Okay. in the Chicagoland area. So around there, it's nothing but largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, a bluegill crappie, northern pike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I don't, I didn't really get into the trout stuff until later, which I'm still more. My heart lies with the warm water. What What got you into fishing, Carf? Just uh, growing up, grandparents, I went camping a lot with them, and there was always a lake at the campground that they were at. You know, we had, had a pop-up, or they had a pop-up camper, you know, the ones that, yeah, would crank, and like, I don't, I don't are you familiar with the pop-up campers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, just growing up, they would, they were, they belonged to a camping group, and they would drive around, um, not drive around. They would have like a, they'd set like a schedule, it's like a camping group. And then they would set a schedule for summer to have like two or three camping weekends with that particular group at a different campground around the Midwest. Do you have one, one do you have one trip in particular that really stands out to you? Oh man, no, I was, those were so long ago. <laughs> I just remember fishing and they're typically around like some holidays. There was one costume. There was one around Halloween that I remember particularly that my grandmother had a, there was this costume she had in the family forever. And it was something that she made. And it was, I don't know. It was the most, un, I don't remember it being uncomfortable, but like hearing stories about it now, it it was really uncomfortable. It was basically like carpet <laughs> and she just like sewed it together. <laughs> so like you could, and it was versatile. So you could be a Sasquatch if you wanted. I don't think anyone was a Sasquatch or proclaimed to be one. Uh, I know I was a dog. So they painted my face. I wore this thing. They painted my face. Someone was a cat one year. Um, I don't even know uh, all the other animals, but the costume just got donated probably, I'd, I'd say like seven re recently, it's like seven years ago to the, to the nearby church where my grandparents live in Elmwood park. And <laughs> they used it for a play for the dog Toto <laughs> for whoever played Toto. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's been in the family forever. Now it's been passed on. It's got, it's all, it's like a light. It has a legacy of its own. Yep. And now it's in the, the wonderful land of Oz. Uh, do, do you ever watch that show parts unknown? Um, with a, with a famous chef, Anthony Bourdain, you ever watch that show? Oh yeah. Where, he, he's got a, uh, he's got an episode of new Orleans where they go down and celebrate the real, uh, Mardi Gras and those masks and costumes that they wear for the real Mardi Gras, not the one on bourbon street, but the one in like Southern Louisiana. And it was like, those things are just straight up wicked looking, man. Holy cow. It, all homemade, homemade type mask and costumes and things like that. It was just crazy. I can imagine what they look like. Cause 
like everything's so commercially evolved into some commercial type deal, but I can imagine what like the originals look like. I, I didn't, I have not seen that episode. Yeah. W- I probably will check it out. When you, when you can't sleep at night about two in the morning and, and everything's kind of <laughs> quiet and, you know, have, have some scotch or something and watch that really, it will really, really freak you out. It was creepy. I was like, holy cow. But yeah, it, it's gotten so, um, so commercialized, you know, that it, it's just not the same as the traditional Mardi Gras. So, but now you, your particular, um, work, I mean, you're, you're a creative how, what made you get into that field in the first place? Did you study that in college, or, or how did you get into that particular field, Carf? Yes, I, I studied that a lot in college. Um, my books involved cases of Ice House, Ham. <laughs> 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 no, the... <laughs> <laughs> I, in college, I actually studied. I went to school for HVAC and electric. Awesome. But I did not go into either of those fields. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like 60% of the, the world in their education. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, went in, I got into commercial insurance. Okay. And I was in commercial. I worked for Zurich, commercial insurance in Zurich and Schaumburg, Illinois. Mm-hmm. And from there, I I decided I kind of wanted to see what it was like to live in another state, and found work. My company to purchase the company from Wells Fargo called RCIS, and it's a crop insurer. I had no idea crop insurance existed oh, sure. until I started looking for you know positions with this new company in Minnesota, and so. Yeah, I, tr- I made the transfer up to Minnesota, and that's how I got up here two years ago. Now, is that the job that you said you, you recently quit there in April? Yeah, I recently left in April. And now I do, I'm basically I self-employed now full-time. I do photography, videography, marketing work with uh, Vitavu. And I also work for my friend's software company remotely, between like zero and 30 hours a week. Oh, wow. Doing that. So kind of all over the place. Now, are you looking to, um, I mean, what, what are some of the films and, and fly fishing films that you've made? I mean, have you made quite a few of them, Carf? Or? No, I, ha- I haven't made any of those films that you would see in like the film tours or anything. No, that's one of my goals maybe for the future. Hoping to, I mean, that, that'd be pretty cool. But I, I, I kind of specialize in shorter shorter productions. Okay. Um, I actually just finished one that was probably my longest video. It was 10 minutes. It was a recent trip to Pyramid Lake with uh, the Vita Vu crew and Pyramid Fly Company. And we did back in at the beginning of March. And I just finished that video this morning. And it's not anywhere yet, but it's done, completed. Pretty stoked about it. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, Pyramid Lake's one where you stand on the ladders, right? You fish off the ladders. Correct. Now, what was that like? I've never been out there before. Okay, so, I, you know, it's easy to make fun of, obviously, you know, uh-huh. people standing on a ladder and everything. And, of, absolutely, of course, I've made fun of people. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a, great, it's a great joke. Like, all those things, you know, especially, you know, when people start coming out with the camel ladders. And stuff. <laughs> 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 but, uh... It's really a cool experience. Like, I, like for me personally, like standing around in one spot fishing is not, it's not for me, but mm-hmm. you forget about that over there. It's, it's a completely, it's like your surroundings. You're like in a completely different world. Like I was in awe of like the mountains, like just surrounding you. Like you could see like snow falling on one in the distance to your right. And then all the way to your left, you have sunshine weird wow and there's no trees and it's like you're on mars and i know that's like what everyone describes it as it's like another planet that's crazy so did you do any good out there did you catch some fish i did i did catch some fish there was a lot of fish caught and every single fish was it just they seem to get bigger and bigger but and my smallest fish was my largest trout, the largest trout I ever caught. Wow. What was that? How big was it? 
I don't even remember. It was like, um, I would say maybe like 18 inches, 19 inches. Oh, wow. That's a nice trout. <laughs> yeah. So what was your goal like there? That, was your goal just to make make a film for Vita Vu? Is that kind of what y'all's goal was? or? For my my goal out there was to yeah record the trip, just have a trip video, um, shoot some photos, just have a good time. But like, oh, my personal goal was I wanted to catch the smallest fish and the biggest fish, <laughs> and I I believe I achieved both. I definitely caught caught the smallest fish, and it's debatable on whether or not I caught the largest fish. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's amazing. So that's awesome that things are working out for you on the creative side of things. Um, as far as f- fishing there in the Midwest, I mean, are you doing the drift lists or are, are there any particular spots or rivers that you're fishing right now on the cold water side or are you just sticking with lakes and, and the warm water thing? I, I, so I do it. Like living here in the Twin Cities is pretty amazing mm-hmm. uh, because like we're a stone's throw away from like – the, the northwest part of the Driftless over here in like River Falls. We have the Kinnikinick River, also known as the Kinney. And then there's the Rush River. And then that's pretty much all I know for like the Driftless up here anyway. There's there's other streams, but either I haven't gone to them, I haven't opened the page in the Fly Fisher's Guide to Wisconsin yet, or none of my Wisconsin, Minnesota friends have taken me to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so so with the with the fly fishing thing, I mean, is that pretty mu- primarily all you do, or do you also do some spinning gear? Oh, I, I'm an opportunistic fisherman. I'm, I call myself a fisherman. <laughs> um, so I, I do everything. Like, there's some places that you just can't cast, and then – you just can't get a bat cast, so you have either have a. I always have a bait caster and a spinning rod in my car, that's as well as a fly rod. Yeah, that that's pretty amazing. Now, the um, as far as fishing and, and tying, you have a fly called um, I hate cotton candy or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. That's a, yeah. That's a, it's just a color pattern. It's just pink and blue. It's it's your basic. Um, reverse tied bucktail, you know, everyone, I, I hate naming flies. So like <laughs> I did, I named it just based on colors. Like, it's your typical bucktail reverse tied bait fish. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Would, would you mind if we share that with our listeners, that video of Absolutely yours? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. How, what made, the, how'd you come up with that pattern? Was it something you're just like, Hey, I just want to try some different colors. And is it, is it really effective for you? And, yeah, I just wanted to try some different colors. I like fishing odd colors. I'm not like it's funny because every time I go to the river, I'm always like, oh, someone's out really doing well, and they have like, and they're using all natural colors. <laughs> and then I'm over, and I look at my box, and I'm like, well, yeah, none of this is <laughs> gonna mimic what that guy's throwing. Like, I it's just a lot of like fire tiger, those cotton color, cotton candy colors, or. I mean, I do have like straight white, but I don't have, I don't, I don't do a lot of olive and like black and olive and stuff like that. More just straight white or just everything's colorful. And, th- and that's how I came up with that fly. It was just, I, I also like things to aesthetically look nice. So I just figured that looked cool. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. We'll, we'll share that with our listeners. But um, as, as far as, as like fly fishing, uh, and things like that. I mean, do you, do you have a, like a, a good group of people there, uh, in the twin cities that you fish with? Or are you pretty much, pretty much fish on your own? No, I, there's a huge group. There's actually like, so the fly fishing community up here in Minnesota is pretty, pretty damn awesome. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's like night and day compared to like how big the fly fishing, well, it's not night and day. That's a bad, but it's, the fly fishing community up here is pretty amazing and it's very large. There's so many people and everyone specializes or just has a passion for something, a different species. Like just cause like we have access up here to so many different fish. Like, cause like I said, we have the driftless right there. So there's a big group of guys that just go fish trout. They just love going to fish for trout. And then there's the guys that love fishing smallmouth. And then you got your hardcore musky guys. And then you got <laughs> me who just fishes for everything. <laughs> now, do you guys get a good steelhead run and things like that at all? Or like, uh, like we do here off the great lakes or, or not? Or is that- you, 
We do. Um, and I am not, I am a horrible reference for that because I, I've never caught a steelhead. I've only fished for them once up in Milwaukee when I lived in the Chicago area. And I only went there once. I didn't, I, I foul hooked a, a king and I fought it for like 15 minutes. <laughs> then I didn't even land it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do want to catch one there, but I know guys, certain time of year, that's all they chase up here. They go up to the Lake Superior. It's called, I think they go up to the Brule River. Okay. And they fish for steelhead up there. Have you done the Boundary Waters at all or not? Yes. I love the Boundary Waters. What's that like? I've never oh, yeah. been up there before. It's, it's everything you want the outdoors to be. It's secluded. It's quiet. It's untouched. It's just awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like there's, there's a bunch of trails, but there's so many places to go. Like you have a lot of like dirt roads up there, but like you, you can't even tell like when the last time someone's been on some of those roads, it's pretty, pretty amazing up there. And it's so vast. Mm-hmm. Like just like looking, looking at it on a map and then like being up there, it's just like, it's amazing that there's this much untouched forest and yeah. lakes and water. It's, that's amazing. pretty cool. Yeah. Did you kayak up through there or canoe or just camp and fish or what did you do up there? Uh, I, yeah, just spot, spot fish and camp and did some hiking and exploring. Um, just like anything. I just, I actually went up there the first summer that I moved up here and like on the way up, there's so many rivers that connect to Lake Superior. Um, and I don't even know what they call it. But they call it the North Shore. There it is. I was going to call it the coast. It's not a coast. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there's so many, there's like one main road that goes up all the way up to like Canada from like Duluth and it runs right along Lake Superior. And I can't even tell you how many, how many rivers you pass over and then you could like pull off and like either go hiking or fishing. And there's waterfalls all over the place. Pretty cool. There in northern Minnesota, before you, before you even get to the Boundary Waters, you're saying? Before you even get to the Boundary Waters, yeah. That's insane. See, here, I moved here from Texas. I moved, I moved to Michigan from Texas. I don't know if you knew that or not. But, um, and, but being up here, see, like in Texas, there's only one natural lake in the whole state of Texas. The, the rest mm-hmm. are all, all results of dams. And there's, there's, not, there's just not the uh, – access to to ri- to rivers like we have here in the great lakes so when i first moved up to michigan and i st- especially when i started fishing the rivers i was blown away by you know just 15 minutes up the road is the rogue river which is a you know it's a, a great trout stream and then we have the asable and the pier marquette and some other ones i, I will not name here publicly <laughs> but uh <Right. laughs> but <laughs> we have some great rivers you know and, and just access to so much water especially the fresh water because in texas i grew up on the coast so we did have access to the salt water but we just didn't have the clean water uh, that we have here in in Michigan, so it was a it was a big change. Did you did you experience something similar then coming from Chicago up into Minnesota? Was that like a big change for you then? Um, not really, because there's there's a lot of uh, natural lakes in Illinois, mm-hmm. and um, I, I mean, obviously the further out west you drive from Chicago, like Illinois is huge. But like, there's there's a lot of lakes, and actually, I will give credit to Illinois that they do have great, like they do take care of, and they have great forest reserves, which like some states I've noticed don't have. Like I, when I visit my one of my uh, best friends, he lives in Toledo. Like there's no lakes around there, and every lake that there is, it's either a reservoir, and they built homes all around it, so you have like zero shore access. Oh wow. So it's like when I go out there and visit him, I only fish the, I, I always forget what, the Maumee River. And because there's no, I, like, I can't just go like quick hit a, a lake and catch a couple panfish because <laughs> there's none of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very familiar with Illinois and it's a huge state. My wife and I lived in St. Louis for a while. And okay. so St. Louis, Missouri, which obviously is right across the border from Illinois. It was, uh, there's no, there's not a lot of, uh, water in St. Louis. You got the river, you know, the, it's the Mississippi, mm-hmm. I think that goes through there, but there wasn't very many, there were a few ponds, 
But in order to find good fly fishing water, I mean, you had to go south a couple of hours in order to find anything, you know. But it was kind of this weird because, you know, moving there from the Great Lakes where you have water everywhere going to St. Louis where it's just not as abundant as it is here, you know. So I can just yeah. I can imagine that Illinois got it's pretty diverse in its access to water and, and things like that. And it is because I, I mean you have the Lake Michigan right there. You have a couple rivers, and I, I forget his name. You just had on. <laughs> it's like Chicago month for Robert, remote no pressure. Rob, yeah, ro- <laughs> yeah, I know, I know Robert Tomes, and then our our yeah. our sponsor from Sand Hill Coffee is from Chicago as well. So it's kind of like it's kind of funny. And I, that's totally not on purpose, but anyways. <laughs> oh, oh, I should have known that. I'm staring at my book, my bookcase right now, and I'm looking right at the right at his name. I have one. Of the, I have that musky on the fly book. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that guy. Uh, with Chicago in general, like I said on the podcast last week, just kind of gets a bad rap, you know. Um, being not being not from the area. If you're not from the area, all you hear is negative things about Chicago. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> do you get frustrated with that? I do. I do. I get frustrated with that, especially like uh, living up here. Uh huh. Um, I I get so frustrated because like uh, I I don't even not to bash on <laughs> my friends and people from Minnesota, but the Twin Cities are cute. Like, Chicago is massive. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, and I keep, that's my argument. People are like, oh, so much crime down there. I'm like, well, you put that um, that population of people up here, you're going to have that amount of crime. <laughs> right. I'm like, you just do the numbers and the average, and it's going to come out to whatever it is. Like, granted, maybe there'll be a little bump up, but you just hear about it more because Chicago is such a huge market, and it has such a huge population. Mm-hmm. I, as opposed to up here, like I kind of, like every time I watch the news up here, it's kind of like a, like a, I don't know, I don't want to say a joke, but I'll just say, yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> there, there's like no news. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting moving here from the big city of Houston, you know, it's like the fourth largest mm-hmm. city uh, right behind Chicago. And, and they Chicago and Houston kind of go back and forth. But, you know, Coming here, I remember when I first moved here back in 2002, I dated this girl from Traverse City, which is a small, t- which is up north, northern Michigan, and her parents got her a, a Subaru, so she wouldn't, you know, they were worried about that Grand Rapids traffic, you know, and, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, there's no Grand Rapids traffic. This is, this is like, the, it's unbelievable, but like you said, it's cute. But, you know, the great thing about um, – I've never been to the Twin Cities other than flying through there. But I know, like, with Grand Rapids, where I live, especially I live in a cornfield, and, like, my only uh, traffic jam is tractors, especially this time of year. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, it is a great place to, to raise a family, and it's reasonably safe. And, you know, I can drive, you know, 15 minutes to a, a great trout stream. I can yeah. – uh, I buy all my food locally from the farmers around my house which you just don't have access to that big city. So, no. yeah, so I, I totally get it, though, because people, people will say, you know, it's like, oh, Houston, and Houston stinks. Um, it's very smelly from all the refineries. It, like, literally stinks. But something about that big city vibe and the smell of the refineries, and I know it's disgust people who are not from there, but, you know, something yeah. about that vibe, it just, it's just home, you know? Mm-hmm. You probably feel the same no. way. I, I totally do. I totally do. And it's, yeah, no, like I can't preach it enough to my friends up here that Chicago's a great city. Go visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so like, like you said, Houston too, like the population, I don't know. That's just me looking at it. I, I haven't looked at the numbers, but to me that kind of seems like common sense. You put more people in a place, there'll be more crime. <laughs> right. Exactly. Millions of more, millions more people. Not just yeah. a couple hundred thousand, but billion, millions of no. more people uh, there than. But I, I would rather raise my family here than than Houston, because mm-hmm. be, because it's just a smaller town, you know, and the fishing's better. But uh, right, oh well, no, there ain't nothing wrong with living where we're living now. Or, right. You know, sounds like you got it pretty good over there, and I, I'd love to like if there was like I think. There are some farmers markets that I just haven't had the time to go go visit. 
Yeah, it's really weird because they have like a trust system. You just go up to the table and put your money in this bucket and then take take whatever you said you're going to take. And, huh. and and they're all over the place. Such in Houston, that would never happen. <laughs> like, that would never, ever happen. No. And, and then, um, like, I know a guy here uh, just probably a mile and a half down the road from my house who butchers cows, and he's got freezers in his garage. And you go in there and get what you want and just write a check for – you know, list out what you took out of his freezer and write him a check. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Awesome. Oh, it's yeah. so cool. And it's like farm, it's like farm raised grass fed beef that, that I get. It's cheaper than like my local grocery store. That's, that, and it's, that's so cool. And then you're supporting local community and you're probably getting some really awesome beef. I, I'll do The beef is amazing. And then I got a cherry orchard, like a quarter mile down the street. Like I'm gonna go get wild cherries tomorrow. Like you never did that in Houston, you know. So, anyways, but what's what's next for you, Carf? I mean, I know you're doing the thing with with uh, Veda Vu and everything, but as far as creative, I mean, what are you looking to accomplish over the next year? What I'm looking to accomplish over the next year is I, I just really just want to have fun and do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Not do what I want, but like basically do what I want, but have fun. You know, I I got. I'm not out to make, you know, a billion dollars, you know, I'm just out there to make a, enough for my phone bill, internet, cable, mm-hmm. <laughs> and beer and pizza. <laughs> That's awesome. And just do some cool stuff. That's all. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to, I, I don't know. I just want to do good in the world. Yeah. Th- through and for the world. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time with us, Carf. Uh, we'll put some links up to your your uh, social links, and then also we'll uh, put up that video of I hate cotton candy as well. I hate cotton candy. Do you really yeah. hate do cotton? You wanna... Do you really hate cotton candy for real, or are you just naming it that? No, I really do. So I don't. There are very, <laughs> very, very few foods that I hate, and cotton candy is one of them. I think that's the only one. Cause I'll, I'll still like, I really dislike mole. Are you familiar? Are you kidding? How can you hate mole? Are you, this, <laughs> oh my God. are you, hold like on. It. Are you Mexican? No, I am Filipino, Italian and Irish. Okay. I, so I, I still try it because I know there's going to be one time at a different location somewhere in the world that I'm going to enjoy it. But, uh-huh. And so, like, I still try it, but cotton candy, I just know it's cotton candy. I'm just not a fan. The, so. the, the taste of cotton candy is pretty consistent. But, yeah. But the mole, see, you've got to get, like, like a... And I've tried so many, too. Like, every time I go out, you know, with people, and then someone gets it, I'm like, hey, can I try that? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I still just don't like this. Dude, that's one of the things, <laughs> that's one of the things I miss about living in Texas is the mole, man, because they don't really have it here. Michigan. Oh, I can imagine. Like up there, you're up in northern Michigan, right? Yeah, Traverse. No, no, no. Traverse? I'm in Grand Rapids. Word. I'm in Grand Rapids. Oh, you're in Grand Rapids. When okay. I, when I first here, when I first moved here, there was like one decent taco place, and now there's like a ton. But I still can't get good mole. So, <laughs> you know, you got to get that yeah. from from an abuelita, a grandma. You know, you, that's what, who's got to make it for you. And then it's like, okay, I can do this. I don't know if I trust it from a restaurant. Oh no, and I have. I've eaten it at like friends' houses, and from their from their from their mothers made it, their grandmothers made it. I just and like it's one of those things. Like I can, I will consistently try, uh-huh. but to this day, I have not found that I like it. Ah, uh, uh, well, that's crazy, man. <laughs> well, so, so maybe, so maybe I will tie like a black fly that says. I kind of dislike mole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Mole, yeah, yeah, tolerable mole or something like that. That would be tolerable good. mole. Tolerable mole. It, but, that kind of sounds like a fun band name. <laughs> it does. Tolerable mole. It sounds like a fusion uh, Tejano band or Norteño. Yeah. That's right. That would be to- tolerable. Tolerable mole, and it's like the yeah. I love, I like Tejano music. Whenever I cook, I cook a lot. So I always put on like, um, food wherever I'm cooking. So like last week I made tacos and I put on Mexican Tejano, you know, and 
Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just, I got to try that more. Yeah, yeah, you should. It, add, it, add some theme to the kitchen. It's really, it's, yeah, and then a few years back, I start. I took a whole summer to learn how to cook like Argentine style. And so I listen, oh, cool. I, I listen to Argentine tango whenever I'm cooking. It really, cha- it really makes the whole thing, uh, changes the vibe, you know, in the house. But this is a fly fishing podcast, not a food podcast. So, oh, I know. But I, uh, I seem to get people off track pretty easy. My mind wanders. Does it like, really? <laughs> it wanders so much. Like I think I, I'm always thinking about how can I flip something and make it ridiculous, or. <laughs> 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 but that's, that's just my head. <laughs> Yeah, I always I always take ideas and I run with them, uh-huh. and I just flip them into like, how can I spin that into something else? That's awesome. Just like the band name. <laughs> yeah, tolerable mole. Tolerable mole. It, it's That's a like, good one. Yeah, it's like a rock band, but the instead of a bass player, you have a tuba player. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Well, thanks a lot for hanging out with us, Carf. We, Carf, we really appreciate it, man. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great night. You too. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on the Remote No Pressure podcast. Don't forget our writing contest. That's right. Coming up the first weekend, the first episode in August. That is coming right up too. It is coming up. We're going to be announcing our winners. Uh, Thank you for all who've already entered. So be sure to get those finished up and sent over. You can just DM me or Jeff T at remotenopressure.com and we'll look over those. Thanks to our sponsors for for offering some prizes yeah. for those people. Um, and then also YouTube. Yeah, don't don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Makes it easy to share. That's right. Share the uh, episodes on your Facebook page or whatever yeah. and uh, pull it up on your Roku device. We're That's doing right. pretty well. I mean, we just launched the channel not that long yeah. ago. Yeah, <clears throat> And we're seeing some we growth. We appreciate everybody coming over, watching the views, the subscriptions. Yeah, yeah. And also uh, leave, leave a, re- a review. We had a very positive review this yeah, week. Yeah, we did. That was awesome. Um, so thanks, whoever left that. We really appreciate that. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, anything else you needed to say, Bill? Any, anything uh, on your heart? Free Sasquatch. Free Sasquatch. Yeah, don't forget free Sasquatch. But we do have those Sasquatch. If you didn't win, if your name is not Joel Sneeden, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you didn't win, you can go to our website at remotenopressure.com. We actually have those on sale for five bucks, yeah. in, in, including shipping and taxing. 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 Uh, shipping and taxing. Shi- shipping and tax. All oh, the whole shoot match, just five bucks. That's not bad. Yeah. And until next time, go fishing. Yeah.